What's going on traders? It's Ricky with TechFood Solutions. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in uh, for today's helpful video. And this is my little sister. I came to visit my family and I had a trip um, planned here visiting one of my buddies um, through YouTube. So I thought I'd take advantage of this time. I was spending some time with my family um, and then me and my little sister were just talking. I was like, how cool would it actually be to film a helpful video just, you know, because everyone's always asked, you know, certain uh, frequently asked questions within our group of TechBot Solutions. Uh, they're always asking the same common questions of like, you know, kind of what to look for. They're starting out, don't really know how to get started. This is going to be a very basic, just entry level video on me trying to teach you as quick as I can. Um, and it shouldn't be more than 20, 30 minutes. So for those that have time, thank you again for joining us. I really do appreciate it. Most importantly, I did shout this out within the TechBud Solutions platform that we have going on. Um, and if you're not a part of it already, the link is down in the description. Um, and it's the Facebook group. So just go ahead and click on that link. Um, and you can network with over 33,000 members worldwide with all the different group chats and Facebook platforms that we have available. Um, Talking a little bit more about that, we just broke 28,000 members in the Facebook group, so I can't thank you guys enough for that. For those that don't follow us and want to stay up to date on when I'm going live and kind of just what it is that I do for my day to day from day trading, you know, the, my dealing with my investment properties and the different businesses that I own, please feel free to follow me again. That my link is down in the description for my uh, personal. It says Ricky Gutierrez Instagram and stuff like that, so you guys can feel free to follow me. Uh, but let's kind of get just right to it. So my little sister's already getting bored, um, and I and I told her she she actually didn't understand. Uh, again, she's 17 years old, um, and she doesn't know too much. Okay, she doesn't know anything about the stock market. She just knows that you know that's pretty much what it is that I do. So I thought you know getting someone that has never traded before. And then kind of just giving them a breakdown on what it is that we do every day and, and the kind of realistic approach that we take. So I'm going to be sharing my screen so you guys can see exactly what it is that I'm going to be talking about. And let's see if we have a couple people um, pulling in right now. <laughs> By the way, my name's Clarissa. Oh, you don't need to say your name. Um, she's <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, let's go ahead and get started. We were reading some of the comments, and you guys are pretty funny. So I made this quick little thing about day trading 101. Um, I'm not too sure if you guys are able to read it or if it's mirrored um, within the webcam. It looks mirrored right now, uh, but it says, you know, identifying potential filter out stocks um, or the best stocks and get quotation because best stocks are going to be labeled as, you know, what the specific type of traders we are. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Plan out your trades, stick to your plan. So when it comes to entry, exit, and then stop loss, and then um, paper trade before investing real money. And then we have three rules and I'll get a little bit more into that right now. So this is pretty much what we're going to um, break down in this video. Uh, and I'm going to be teaching her. So the whole point is not for me to really be teaching her cause she's really not going to be day trading. Uh, but I do have a surprise for you guys at the very end. Uh, but it comes down to, um, just talking about it and trying to teach her. Therefore, for those that are watching and watch this video can, you know, kind of learn kind of what, I, what I'm trying to express her. So again, it's a very elementary type of way for me to try to educate someone on trading stocks because we know there's a lot that comes to it. Um, but let's kind of, let's kind of go to it. So the first one, identifying potential. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. We're going to be using the TD Ameritrade think or swim platform. I'm going to talk to her a little bit about support and resistance, kind of my style of trading more of like the technical side. Um, and, you know, how to break down, you know, and find margins of profit. So for those that don't know how to do that or don't know how to identify potential, this would be a great video or a great part of the video for you guys to stay tuned. So we're going to start sharing my screen. And just like that, we are here, TD Ameritrade Think Christian Platform. I do have a video how you guys can um, gain access to this. So you guys literally just on the YouTube search bar, search up Think or Swim Ricky Gutierrez, and there will be a video on how you can download this platform for free, even on your MacBook as well. So these are the stocks that are on my watch list from top to bottom. It's the highest volume to lowest volume. Um, as you guys know, I like to focus on stocks with healthy amounts of volume. For those that ask me that question um, very often, the, what I mean by healthy amounts of volume, I try to focus on stocks depending on where the price range is um, and what time of day it is. Around 10,000, you know, I, I like the volume to be at 10,000 per the one minute frequency. So let's kind of get right into it. So from top to bottom, we're going to be identifying margins of profit. And again, we're going to be taking a very soft approach and then having her break the stock down. So let's let's kind of go to it. So this is AMD, so close on. You literally just have to press down like that, and then it moves down to the next stock. So that kind of little arrow, right? Okay, so this is what you need to focus on right here. Mm -hmm. Does this, 
this is like kind of like all over the place, right? Yeah. So for you as someone that's never seen a stock market, this can be kind of confusing on like why it jumped, right? Yes. Well, there was an earnings call and it ended up doing better than expected. And then that's why it popped up. So this is a catalyst. Be what I mean by that is there was certain news that came out that its earnings report ended up doing much better than expected. Therefore, the valuation of their company ended up being valued more than what, you know, the, right? Makes sense. Like yeah, if a company does yeah. better than expected, then therefore the company would be valued a little bit more. Yeah. And again, um, we're, yeah, but again, this is too confusing for, um, I really just, I, I don't mean, no, it's not, I don't want to say it's too confusing for you. She got offended. Um, <laughs> but it's just like all over the place, right? So let's focus on something again, not forcing the trade and not forcing her to actually trade something that she doesn't understand. Again, that's one of our big rules. Only invest in what you see value in and what you can manage. So let's go down to the next one. This is wrap. I kind of have it laid out for you on um, a previous trend that we were able to see. So just to give you guys a better understanding, this is a five-day analysis, right? So it's been showing signs of downward momentum. So it was showing, you know, a downward trend, right? Yep. Is that something that you would want to buy here and then sell here? No. Right? Because if you buy it at like, you know, $2.60 and then sell at two forty, Yeah, you'd be losing a lot of money. Yeah. So again, yeah. you don't want to buy on a downward trend. You want to buy when it's either, you know, when you identify a margin for profit or when it's showing signs of upward momentum, right? Correct. Okay. So giving you a better understanding, let's focus in this area right here. It's been kind of flatlining, right? As you guys can see the past two days, it's been holding overall above 240. So that's the overall support. Mm -hmm. But realistically, it, you know, today and, and as of, Majority of today from its initial bounce, if you can see right here, the bounce was at $2.43 and it peaked out at $2.50, right? It looked like it ended up closing after market hours. So after market hours, meaning like the market closes, meaning that no one else can buy and sell stocks, only those that have access to after market hours. Right? It's just restricted to certain investors. Um, and it had a support at $2.43. And just to give you an understanding, I kind of broke it down for before this video. Um, a support is where a stock usually bounces at, right? And then a resistance is usually where a stock peaks out at. I want to make sure you understand. Does it, it does it mean that it's impossible for the stock to break above 250? No. Why, why not? Because it could go anyway. It wants. Okay. So that, that, and that's good that you say that because it's very important to know that just like a stock can continue to break above 250, it's that likely for it to break below 240. And we're going to get a little bit more into that when planning out our trades, okay? But that's good that you understand at least where it bounces at and where it peaks out at. Why is it important? Why do you think it's important to know where it bounces at and where it peaks out at? So you know where to buy and sell. So where would you buy? If all you saw was, again, none of this data was here. Yeah. So if you were going to trade this tomorrow um, and, it, and it opens and it holds above 243, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go a little bit further back. If you saw that it bounced yesterday, right? Because we're thinking that it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah. So today it bounced at $2.43. They peaked out at $2.50. Um, and it holds, let's say, after market hours. And when, when it opens tomorrow, it still holds above $2.43. And it's holding at $2.43. Is that an area that you think that you'd buy in? That you would sell? Where would you plan to sell? Where's realistic to sell within one day? Realistically, given this information? Yeah, well, given yeah, the performing your analysis. Like, move, move the cursor to um, where you would want to. Probably like around here. Around where? Here? Like, where did it peak out at? Right here. So that's for everyone that doesn't see. Two. They can see close. 40 minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it peaked out at like the price points right here. So 250. 250. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could sell at 249 if you want to be conservative, right? You identified the support, so where it usually bounces at, and yeah. the resistance. So right. why is that important? Because you want to make sure you know where you're buying. I just want to be safe. So 249. 249. Okay. So from low from low to high, right? Mm -hmm. If you buy in at 243, and you sell at 249, mm -hmm. with this little percentage calculator, um, it calculates that it's 2.42 percent, right? Growth. Yeah. So for every thousand dollars, it's about you know twenty four dollars that you made. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's not bad. Let's say twenty five dollars, right? Mm -hmm. um, twenty five dollars if you're because with Robinhood you don't have any commission. So let's say you know you're starting out, you don't have a lot of money, you have about a thousand dollars to invest. You'd make you know twenty four dollars for this trade. Not bad, right? Right. Investing a thousand dollars. So not bad. You invest a thousand dollars. Just yeah. Well, we'll, okay. So we'll put two point. 42%. Um, 
percent growth and then this is rad okay so mm -hmm. we identified the potential this is called a technical analysis you identified the, pot the potential the low and the high points mm -hmm. and you're planning for your trades tomorrow let's move on to the next one because again there's a series of stocks this might not be again you have three day trades within a five day week if you have a margin account if you're under the pdt rule so i'll talk to you a little bit more about that later <laughs> um so you want to make sure that you want to make sure that realistically like you have you have three day trades within a day yeah. um, Meaning if you can only trade three times a week, like day trade, meaning buy and sell a stock all within the same day within a couple minutes, um, you want to make sure that those stocks that you're buying and selling the three times a week are good quality stocks, right? So you just found one that has 2% potential, but what if you have one that, you know, you find that has 5 or 10% potential? I yeah, think it'd be more worth it, right? So yeah. that's that's what we're going to have to do right now. So I feel so weird talking to you like this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going back. Let's continue going down the list. So TOPS. TOPS did very well today. We called it out. I'm not too sure if you guys tuned in for our live stream, but um, we we called it out when we saw the support and then the resistance. This was pre-market hours if you guys tuned in for our live stream. Ended up bouncing at 235. And then what I called out was, well, if it breaks above t um, 40 cents, then that would be you know good signs of upward momentum, right? Because it's rising. Mm -hmm. So when it breaks a resistance, it shows good signs that it's moving up, right? That it's breaking these these hard points where it usually peaks out at. It's it's continuing to break them. So that's a really good sign. So it broke through and it continued to rise. So from low to high, so where I usually would have bought in is 40 cents. And I would have sold realistically within 50 cents because that's kind of where it peaked out at during pre-market hours. So that's 23%. It hit highs of 32%. But the why do you think? You wouldn't know, and I know you wouldn't know, but, well, <laughs> that's that's not what I mean. Um, so what what I mean is, why would I not buy this stock that's 46 cents per share? What do you think about 46 cents? It's a little bit. It's a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to manage your risk, if that's the most important thing that you're trying to do, it might be hard to manage your percentage risk when if you lose one per, one cent, for a 40 cent stock, you already lost 2.5%. Yeah. If the stock that you're about to invest in the RAD is already is less than that, then this might not be the safest stock to invest as a new trader, right? That's a big um, kind of like, I don't wanna say misunderstanding that traders jump into, but because these stocks are so you know, low cost and because you could either make it or break it, this could be very attractive, right? Because of the 30% growth, you know, this had 30% potential, why wouldn't you trade this? But again, as a new trader, it's better to play it safe and to learn and develop yourself as a trader. So once you've proven to yourself, and if you see, you know, you see that this is a niche that you can be successful in, yeah. then you can move on over. You got to make sure that you really understand it before you jump into it. Yeah, especially with something that you know you don't understand, you don't know how to manage. So it might not be the right. best stock. Let's let's if go you're down. Like me, you're sure. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's continue going down the list. So again, press press the arrow. Okay. Um, so we're going down the list. What does that look like? It looks like it's showing signs of upward momentum, right? Right. Again, and it's also like going down a lot too. Yeah. So it's 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 pretty volatile, right? And it's right below a dollar. But overall, it's it's going. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is showing signs of upward momentum from the support that it had at um at about like eighty six cents, eighty seven cents. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's barely above a dollar. Might not be the safest trade for you. Okay. Now with PL, okay, well, I kind of have this one drawn out for you, but PLUG, what do you see here? So let's focus on it's the past pretty, three days. It's pretty stable. It's pretty. I mean, you can see a trend, right? That's the whole thing. Where yeah. Now you get the cursor, and where's the low points? Low points are about right here. Well, get like. Oh, like really low? No, right. I mean, um, realistically, as of today. So where's today? Where did it play out today? Right this black area, right? Yeah. Okay, so where did it kind of flatline? Where's there a lot of candlesticks that are like kind of just stacked? On the bottom, mm -hmm. but where's the bottom? Right, right mm -hmm. here. Or so, so two thirty three. Yeah. Right, two thirty three is really where it really helped. So we can call that a pretty solid support. And then it had a resistance at two forty. But realistically, you're right. Two thirty is the support. Two forty is the resistance. This is for PLUG, so it has a margin of profit of four point two three percent. That's a little bit better than RED, um, right? Mm -hmm. So again, you would buy close to two thirty, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And you would try to sell close to 240. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good margin. And it and look, it's consistent. It's a consistent trend, right? It bounces here, and it hits a resistance here. Oh man, guys, she's already yawning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when this it plays is my out, second time. So when it comes out to, um, 
you know, you've performed your technical analysis. Now plan out your trade. Um, where with PLUG, we saw that it has a potential for profit from 230 to 240 of what is that? There's a potential of 4.29 percent, right? That's a little bit better than RED, right? Correct. Do you understand it pretty well, the low and the high point? Yeah. Okay, so the low and the high point. Like the most low and the most high. Yeah, because you want to buy low and sell high, right? Like average, yeah. You don't have to buy at the lowest point and you don't have to sell at the highest point, but you have a general understanding, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that in just a bit. But again, so this one from, and we'll write that out, from 230 to 240, right? Yeah. Let's move on and let's just do one more. You want to like pick out to focus on before the market opens uh, for the following day and then you focus on one to two stocks once the market opens. You don't want to overwhelm yourself or give yourself too many options. So she's just looking at me with like, let me go face. <laughs> um, but let's look at, it was highs of 345. It's whack. It closed, come on. And it's at lows of 220. What do you think? What do you think, Lauren? Like, do you, would you feel safe trading this? Like, has there been a consistent trend that, like, as a new trader, if you're trying to be conservative, is this something that you want to invest in? Um, recently, it looks like it's been calming down right here, but yeah. overall... It looks like it's been flatlining, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's been flatlining where? Yeah. Okay, well, where's the lowest point, really, within the day? So, right 220, right? Yeah. And then where's the like highest point? Not the highest highs, but like a good high the point. The average? Yeah. Well, that's the highest. Yeah, yeah well, I'd say 240. 240, it's touched it like once and then pretty held pretty nicely above it twice. This is actually one that I called out within the Tech But Solutions group chat, the Discord group. I called out the support at 220, and then I called it out when it broke the resistance at 225 and then 230, and then from there hit highs of 245. So this is actually a really good one that we called out today that a good amount of our traders were able to do very well on. Um, so it's a very common trend. It ended up doing well. So just because it is all over the place, this might not be the best one for you. So let's continue moving down. And is this one that you think that you would want to invest in? No. Why not? Because it seems kind of like all over the place. I don't know. It might be a little I, bit more difficult. It's a little bit more difficult to understand. I would want to make sure that I okay. see that. And, and just like that, yeah. you know, there's, it's, it's, you know, you don't feel comfortable, then don't trade it, right? Yeah. It's that simple. What right. about this one? Oh, no. Right? All over the place? This one? Nope. Nope. Okay. Wait, maybe. So I know this is one that I traded today, and I know it doesn't show, like, Right, actually, yeah. Well, I told you a little bit about yeah. this one, right? So I, I traded this one today. I ended up not doing the best that I could have, but I ended up doing pretty well. Um, but my call-outs were, were on point. So it had a huge <laughs> drop, um, and there was it, it was going through a certain process, and it released certain use that was bad for this specific type of um, company. Um, and due to that, the valuation dropped. And that's why I always say that I love chasing red stocks, because once they open in red, they have this huge margin of profit to make up. Again, it started at $2, and it made its way back up to $2.90. That was the high. So from $2 to $2.90, that's where it peaked out at. That's 31% profit. And all right, Clarice, you don't have to exaggerate. No, I'm not exaggerating. That's a lot. It is, right? It's yeah. like consistent Compared growth. to all the other ones, it's like 2 point something, 4 points something. And I thought that but, was a lot. But again. 31 uh, is like. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it, it was showing signs of consistent upward momentum, and during the, the closing hours, when it had this drop, it built a support at $2.70, and then it built a resistance at $2.90. Okay? Yeah. So there's this margin. So from 270 to 290 that's 6.76, 6. 6. right? This is for CUR. Very simple plan, and what you're going to most likely want to do once the market opens if it comes back down to this 270 support, you know, again, that's the low point. 290 is the high point. You know, buy low, sell high, right? Yes. It's a very simple concept, very simple idea. So we'll talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about that. So this one has 6.70% and then, um, or 6.76%, and it has the potential or, let's see, the, the support at 270, which is where it bounces at, and resistance at 290, right? All right. So for those that tuned in for that long, um, again, let's let's kind of recap on 
you know, there's one thing about identifying potential and it's obviously a lot easier for her um, because I'm here and I've traded these stocks um, before or, you know, recently. Um, so I'm pretty familiar, right? If you didn't have me, do you think you'd be able to like a good investment or a bad investment or anything like that? Overall, I mean, no, because I don't, ha I have no idea what any of this means. <laughs> but if I had like a little bit of, if you educated me a little bit, beforehand yeah and i feel like i i feel like i have an idea of like what it okay hold that thought okay yeah. Yeah. all right we'll yeah. talk about that in a bit okay so now we've identified the potential um we filtered out the best stocks so we were in my watch list and we were filtering out certain stocks that you know she felt comfortable with trading that she was able to manage her risk again she's a new trader she didn't want to trade stocks that were all over the place we simply went down the list um, and we focused on stocks that she saw potential in. Realistically, I saw potential in them, and I kind of am 100% aware that I kind of guided her that way. But it comes down to again trying to guide her in the right direction. So we filtered out the best stocks that meet her certain criteria. Um, the second one is um, now we're going to plan out your trade. So we actually already kind of did that. So for RAD, PLUG, and CUR, we identified the support and the resistance. Um, we're going to be talking about one thing on, on how I plan out my trade and that's managing your risk. And we're going to, again, we're going to have to talk about an entry and exit and a stop loss. So entry is where you buy, exit is where you sell, right? For a profit mm -hmm. and understand that's not the only option. You, your only option is not to just buy and sell for a profit, right? right? Because sometimes it can break the support. And if it breaks the support, that means your plan is completely like gone out the door and that's where you have to cut your losses, sell your position. And that's one, does that make sense to you? It doesn't, right? If you're investing in something to kind of make a profit, it might not make the most sense to have to sell for a loss, right? Yes. Do you get that? Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the biggest misunderstandings for people is when they jump into the stock market because they see so many people making money that they think the first thing that when they invest in a stock, they're going to sell for a profit. Um, and they have no general understanding on, you know, that anything can happen in the stock market. And that's why it's so important to be able to manage your risk and to have a plan on where you're buying, where you're selling. And if it breaks below, you know, your buy point or support that you've identified, then your plan has kind of gone to, you know, something that's, that's not really making sense anymore. So therefore you should cut your losses. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then um, that's, that's really going to be one of the last things. So I kind of want to just see what people are saying right now. <laughs> Okay. Is there any, anything funny going on? No. All right. Thank you guys again for the, those who are tuning in. I really just want to see what, if you guys have any specific questions. Um, but again, we've talked about identifying potential. We've talked, we filtered out stocks already. Um, and then the next thing is planning out our trade. We kind of already did that. And I'm going to do it very quickly um, and share the screen with RAD. I'm going to talk to you on how I personally do it. So we have identified the low points and the high points. Does it mean that it's that easy to trade? It'd be nice, right? If you could just, yeah. if it was that easy. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about the entry, the exit, and then the stop loss and kind of when to decide to buy it. And I'm going to give you guys an example based on how I bought in today and kind of like my approach on it. So I don't just try to buy in at the support and kind of try to get in at, at the lowest point, but I try to buy in when they're showing, you know, a quick little sign of upward momentum. So I'll talk to you guys about that, um, being able to identify the bounce um, and then the importance of sticking to your plan. So let me go ahead and I'm going to start sharing my screen again and I'm going to give you a breakdown real quick, Larissa, okay? Okay. All right. So I'm going to do it with a stock that I actually traded today. So um, let's actually do it with CYCC. For those that are in our group chats, you guys saw my call out on CRCC, on CYCC, I apologize. And something that we've been calling out within the past two days, so again, let's just focus on that. Um, it, it came down from a, a, I lost yesterday with CYCC. I didn't do very well, as you guys can see. Um, I sold that when it went below 190, so I didn't do well. Um, but actually, if we go to a, um, uh, it doesn't let me go to a three-day analysis, let me see. Oh, it does. One minute, try to man. You're really bored. You're yawning already. Okay, so pretty much what I just want to tell you is, we, if we go back here from its initial drop, um, it had a support at two dollar, at one dollar and seventy one cents. Meaning that overall, the support was at one seventy and never went below one seventy. Does that mean that it's impossible? No. It's still possible, right, for a price to go below a certain point. Mm -hmm. And if the price goes below a certain point. Um, something that I usually do is I cut my losses. So again, my plan has gone to crap, right? And I just want to cut my losses and move on to the next one. That's the easiest way, yeah. to, easiest ap uh, approach to take it. Yeah. Um, 
So again, let's focus on how it played out today. Today, on, on how it bounced once the market opened, um, ended up doing pretty well, hit highs of like the 179, had a pullback, and then it bounced at 171. Okay, so this is the low point. This is for CYCC. So we've identified the support and we've identified that once it came back up, it had a resistance. Something that you might not always want to follow is the resistance it builds right as the market opens because right when the market opens, it's kind of like, like you know when if you go to like a horse race and the horses are, are like launched out of the, the cage right as the race starts, mm -hmm. that's kind of like the stock market because yeah. you know everyone just goes in. It's, it's where you see the most volume, the most transactions. And then once the horses are kind of going around the track, you know they're getting tired and it's starting to slow down, right? Yeah. Again, it, there's huge momentum. So it might not be the best indicator to focus on you know once the market opens for that to be the resistance where you want to sell at. Right. All right. So it set its support and it set its resistance, right? Right. Now it's coming back down. Understanding that previously, you know, two two days ago, right, we saw that it bounced at one dollar and seventy one cents, and it's coming back down. And it previously bounced at one dollar and seventy one cents today, and it's coming back down. Where would you expect for you know CYCC to bounce? If it bounced at one dollar and seventy one cents today, mm -hmm. and it bounced two days ago at one dollar and seventy one cents, and never went below that price, where would it most likely bounce? Right, it's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. Does that mean that it's 100% going to bounce there? No. Okay, so we've identified the support and understanding that it peaked out at, again, just looking at the previous, like the candlestick where it peaked out at, yeah. um, once the market oh. wasn't crazy, where did it peak out at? Oh, let me see. 178. Okay, so resistance oh. at 178, right? Yeah. Do you know your buy point and your sell point? Yes. Okay, so now we calculate your potential for profit. So 171 to 178. 3.96. Is that horrible? 3.96? Yeah, it's not terrible. It's not terrible compared to the other ones, right? So about um, 4% for CYCC. Again, it's, it's a previous trend. It's proven itself that this is a good buy point mm -hmm. and that this is a good sell point. Okay? So once it was coming back down and it hit 171, would you have bought right away? I think so. You would have? That's that's one, and that's totally okay that you think that. Um, and there's a lot of people that do take that approach, and they buy in at 171. The approach that I like to take is again, you have three day trades within a five day period, meaning that if you bought in at 171, and right because you got filled, our plan is if it goes below 171, your plan has gone out the door, yeah. and you need to cut your losses. Really below 170. If it goes below 170, your plan is out the door, right? Yeah. Something that I like to do is to give myself would, a better understanding yeah. that it's going to show signs of upward momentum. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I was about to say, I would wait until I see, like, a little bit. After it hits 171, I would wait a little bit and see kind of where the line is going. And then if it's going up, then that's right when I would buy it. So, like, at 172, I'd buy it. And that's exactly what I did. That's okay. And I swear, guys, I did not tell her that. Um, but that's usually what I like to do. I identify the support, I wait for the bounce, yeah. and then I wait for it to start showing signs of upward momentum. Once it broke um, at 171 mm -hmm. um, and it hit highs of 173, um, I ended up buying in at 172. So it started showing signs of upward momentum. Did I know 100% that I was you know, going to do good? No. No, right? But, but based I, on the past. Based on the previous is, trend, yeah. right? The 171 support was a valid support because of how what I identified. Yeah. So I waited for the bounce, bought in at 172. And I know that 178 is the resistance. And that's exactly what I told the group. I told us, the group that the support was at 170. It bounced at 171 like it has done within the past three days. Mm -hmm. And then it has a resistance at 178 based on the resistance that it had within the same day. Mm -hmm. So as the stock was rising, I was calling it out when it was going above 174, when it went above 175. And the approach that I took is when I got filled at 172, right away as I got filled, there's, a, there's an order type called stop loss, which I put at 170. Meaning that if it goes below 170, my position will automatically sell. Why is that important? Well, people always think that, I, I guess, um, I'll be sharing my screen on this one. People always have the idea that when you invest in the stock market, that you know, if you put in $1,000, you will lose $1,000 because you know, if you invest in something, it's going to like, if you invest in like penny stocks or low cap stocks, that you will lose all your money. And that might be the approach. Right, for those that don't take the precaution of knowing whether they're buying, knowing whether they're selling, and if their plan doesn't go according to plan, to cut their losses. So what I did is as soon as I got filled at two dollar at one dollar and seventy two cents, I ended up putting I uh, ended up putting up my stop loss at one dollar and seventy cents. Yeah. So if it broke the support, the plan that I had out, so again, I bought in at one seventy two, my plan was to sell at one seventy eight. Yeah. 
And if it goes below 171, which was the previous support, I will cut my losses at 170. So I give it a small margin. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to sharing my screen. Right? Yeah. Okay, so if I got in at 172 and I stop loss, if it goes, it's not going to really show me, but it's less than 1%. If you guys have the primary pick checklist, it's a, an Excel sheet that I made for you guys, and it calculates what your potential for loss is. Um, again, it's, I mean, I'm going to lose about two cents, so let's just say it's about this. Uh, it's about 1% that I'm losing with a potential for profit from, you know, one step, uh, from 172 to 178. It's about 3.31. Again, my potential for profit is greater than my potential for loss, so it might be worth my trade, right? Mm -hmm. I just decided to make the trade based on previous trends. It made sense to me, and I felt my like potential for loss was wasn't huge, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was, as it was approaching 178, it was difficult for me to. I put a limit order at 178, but I never got filled. And why? Although it shows that the candlestick hit highs of 178, the reason that I didn't get filled is I didn't actually put my limit order there until it was at 178. So that's kind of a little bit getting a little bit more into it. There's too many sellers at $1.78 and not enough buyers at 178. There's only buyers at 177. And what I told the group is, guys, there's a resistance at 178 that we've called out. What I did was I sold at 177. It made sense to me. I knew that, you know, I actually thought it was going to break above 178 um, because it's usually what happens because I usually sell too early. That's my, uh, it's just something that my group makes fun of me about. Um, but again, I stuck to my plan. I identified a good buy point. I get sell point, I waited for the bounce, so for it to show signs of upward momentum, and then once it hit that resistance, I saw that I wasn't going to get filled. Am I gonna be greedy and try to sell at 178? No, I'm just gonna lock in my profits, and I sold at 177, right? Made a, made $100 flat on that hey, what's position. What's the point of not selling at that point, at the highest point? Why do you, what makes you greedy about that? Well, because if you're trying to just, if you're, if you're trying to get filled at 178 and no one actually buys it, you know, you're trying to sell your stock, your yeah. shares at 178, but if no one's going to, if no one's buying it, then you're never actually going to sell. So therefore, if you never sell and the stock price starts going down, then you just miss that on your opportunity. So therefore, I saw that there were buyers at, because there's a thing called level two that allows you to see where people are buying and selling. Yeah. And I saw that there were buyers at 177, at two, at two, at one, uh, 177. Yeah. And I removed my limit order, which is a, a price like where I put to sell, I removed that one at 178 and I put a limit order to sell at 177. Yeah. The reason why is I saw that there were buyers at 177, so I knew if I put my limit order, I would get filled. So I just locked in my profits. Okay. Okay. That's the easiest way to put it. Um, so I got in at a good buy point and then I got in at a good, I stuck to my plan. The thing that could have happened is it could have gone below, right, 170 and I would have stopped lost out. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most important things for all those that are you know, just getting into trading right now. That's one of the most important rules. Although we are investing to make money, understand that you're not always going to see success in the plan that you have created. And one of the most important factors when, when trading is having a plan and including a stop loss or a max percentage loss. If you have a max loss for the amount of money, the most amount of money that you can you know, lose in one day, or if it's a you know certain dollar amount that you know no more than fifty dollars. Once you hit fifty dollars, you're done for the day, regardless of what it is. Always have a plan and always understand that once you hit your max loss, to cut your losses. Because does this make sense to you? If you know, I, I locked in. It was like um, a little bit more than three percent on that on that position, and then my trade before that was a little bit more than two percent. So I locked in five percent on the day, mm -hmm. and if I keep my losses at like at, at what I was doing at one to two percent. I can you know, see two red days and just see one green day like I did today, and I'll still, at the end of the week, be in the green. And that's the whole point. It's, it's consistency, it's sticking to your plan, and it's having a plan and making sure that regardless of what happens and you know, not getting emotional about what it is that you're trading, that you stick to your plan and you, and you sell. It's a very simple concept, but you would, you would be amazed on, you know, even, and I don't want to like, you know, subjugate anyone. I know that if she got into trading um, and, you know, she started investing and she was doing, you know, really well for two days and then all of a sudden her, you know, first stock that she invested in isn't doing the way that she expected. One of the first reactions that we have just as people is you know, to get emotional and be like, no, like, you know, you're supposed to be going up. I'm not going to like cut my losses. I know you're going to go up. You have to understand these are stocks completely different, right? They have nothing to do with you. Yeah. And if they're not going according to your plan, Cut your losses and move on to the next one. Learn from what you did wrong and try it again. Try it again. But again, people, because they don't even really care about 
um, stopping loss or, or cutting their losses. It's the having the three day trade. It's the most valuable thing. And a lot of people within our group tell us that it's, I, I could care less about losing, you know, $10 or $20, whatever it is that you're investing because of stop lossing out. But it's those day trades that are so valuable. And it's sometimes the reason that you guys don't want to use the day trade to cut your losses and you'd much rather use it to try to sell for a profit. But uh, guys, again, if you have a plan, stick to your plan. So we're just going to recap real quick. So we did day trading. We identified potential. We filtered out stocks. Uh, to be the best stock and then we planned out you know our trade we identified a good buy sell and then stop loss and then one of the biggest recommendations that I can have for those that are watching this video and for those that are watching for the first time there is an option that you guys have it's the TD Ameritrade paper trading option which means it's simulation trading you trade with fake money but you get to trade real-time stocks with all of us again that's one of the most important things that I can recommend for you guys. Um, and when it comes down to trying to be exposed to a market that you want to potentially invest in, the biggest recommendation for those that are always asking, you know, hey, I'm interested in investing in the stock market. What's the first step that I should, you know, take? The first step that you should take is if this is a market that you see value and that you might want to invest in, take the first step in opening a, opening a paper trading account to test the waters. See if when you know you're learning while you're learning. Test it out while, you know, they'll give you like fake $200,000 and they'll allow you to trade real stocks. So if you stick to your plan and you develop yourself as a trader and you still see that you're not a profitable day trader, why invest real money, right? So it, it's great. There's no monetary risk. Um, you don't have to invest any money. You don't have to start out with any money. And that's it, right? You saw that you can't do well in this. You were trying really hard and that's one of the biggest things. If you're sticking to your plan and you're trying your hardest to be successful in this market, but just for some reason you're not getting it, then move on to the other one. That's one of the things that I try to encourage most is this whole point of TechBot Solutions is not to just encourage you guys to invest, but it's to try new things and to be exposed to new opportunity. And that's why we have so many subgroups within TechBot Solutions. We have you know day trading, we have swing trading, uh, we have you know buying and reselling of different products, we have real estate, we have so many things and so many different types and styles of you know entrepreneurship within our community. And that's one of the biggest things that I want to promote. I don't care if you guys, I don't want to say I don't care. It's just I, I don't. I don't mind that you guys don't want to day trade with us. All I want you guys to do is to at least expose you to a market that, you know, that's out there, that it comes down to you for me just, you know, exposing you to that and providing the fundamentals on how we take that approach and for you as the investor or entrepreneur to make sense of it. And if it makes sense to you, then, you know, great. And if you see success in it, then great. But if you don't, then move on to the next one, right? You didn't lose any money. You dedicated time. You developed yourself as a trader. You just didn't see that this is a profitable market. So just move on to the next one. Right, that's the biggest thing. But you're surrounding yourself with over 33 motivated, 33,000 motivated individuals worldwide, and that's one of the most beautiful things. I'm so motivated every single day, not because I day trade, but because I have a community that supports me. One of my like my little sister, she's into like um, what do you watch, like makeup gurus or stuff like that. Me just gurus. right, but just you know, just imagine if you had a community, right, of a couple hundred of beauty gurus just like you, a bunch of little girls like you that are 17 or 18, right around your age, um, but have the same mindset as you. They want to, you know, become, you're, you want to go to school for like fashion and stuff like that. Just imagine surrounding yourself with a bunch of motivated girls that want to pursue fashion. It would promote like a fun environment, right? Yeah. That's the whole thing Tech Bud Solutions is. And that's the thing that I don't think a lot of people understand. That's all we are. We're a supportive community to help you and motivate you to try new things within your own means. And that's moving on to the next thing. Again, if you're not a part of Tech Code Solutions already, the link is in the description. It's a free Facebook group, so you guys can feel free to click that link. Um, and then you guys can feel free to follow me within my social media accounts that are posted down below. Um, these are just some tips that if you were to day trade that I would recommend. What was that? Okay. So um, these are just some trips, uh, ti uh, tips. So um, <laughs> 2 to 3%. So growth plan, <laughs> two to three percent growth per trade. So again, just keeping consistent, just letting you guys know that consistency is key. Keeping losses small and just continue to lock in consistent profit. So that's pretty much all that means. Although you guys might not think that that's, uh, you know, like very important. Just understand that if you lock in two point three four percent profit three times a week, just with your three day trades, two point three four percent profit. That doesn't seem like a lot, right? With all the stocks that we, you know. Um, calculated 2.34% profit. If you can lock that in every single day, just three times a week, mm -hmm. not five, not every day, three times a week on average, you will grow $1,000 to $20,000 within one year. That's huge, right? You just made $19,000.
with 2.34%. So consistency is key. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's extremely easy, easy yeah. because there's a lot of mistakes and a lot of things that go into it, but it's just understanding that the numbers make sense and consistency is key in keeping losses small. So um, keep losses small, so that's the next one. And then don't force a trade. If you don't feel comfortable trading, if you don't understand the trade or someone's telling you to trade it, don't trade it, guys. You're not here to prove yourself to anyone. You're not here to you know, try something that you're not comfortable with. All I want to encourage you is to expose yourself to new opportunity and do it within your own means. So again, don't force a trade. Don't force an investment. Don't force anything. If you're not comfortable with it, then you shouldn't invest in it. And always, the last thing is always manage risk. When it comes down to investing in anything, um, if it comes down to the buying and reselling of different products, if it comes down to you know buying and selling a home, right, whatever it is, trading stocks, you always want to make sure you manage risk, that your, potential, that your potential for profit is much greater than your potential for loss. That just makes sense, right? If your potential for profit is so much greater than your potential for loss, then the investment might be worth it. But it comes down to you as an investor to justify that. And then um, the last thing is always have a plan, right? So when I, when I talk about managing your risk, the only way that you can manage your risk is if you understand both ends. You understand the bad parts um, or what can go wrong, and you understand the good parts. So, you know, let's say with a house, you know, it has a potential for profit of $100,000, but if something goes wrong, you could see, you know, a $20,000 loss. At least you're managing your risk. You know what you can sell it for if you need to cut your losses. You know what you can sell it for if everything goes according to plan. And again, as an investor, that's just a... a just risk that you have to take, but at least you're managing it, right? Mm -hmm. And you understand it. And because you understand it, you're willing to take it. So that's um, the managing risk portion. Um, and then last thing, it's have fun with it. So you guys are investing. A lot of you guys are investing as a pastime. We have so many business owners. We have so many entrepreneurs. You guys would be amazed on the amount of quality people we have within TechBot Solutions. I'm not saying that everyone day trades with us actively because obviously that's not the case, but we have so many motivated people that within their own means, are you know are juggling their businesses, their normal job, you know their families, their schoolwork, right? The biggest thing is have fun with it. Don't force it. Do it within your own means. If it takes ten years for you to, uh, oh, that's kind of extreme. But if it takes like you know five years for you kind of to, you know, learn this this whole idea and of, completely of, understand of, it. and completely understand it, and it's something that you enjoy and, and see. The biggest thing is see value in it then let it take five years. Just understand consistency is key and so is discipline. So continue going for it, setting up a plan on, you know, within one year, I want to understand this. Within two years, I want to see this. Within three, four, right? Mm -hmm. Having a plan and then sticking to it, right? And if the numbers make sense, if you if you know that you're motivated and disciplined enough to do it, then it would make sense. And again, just have fun with it and don't force it. If you're forcing it and you're not enjoying it, then, you know, it might not be the best market for you. But don't just, you know, give up at, at the first, you know, like trial for mistake. Um, just know that we all make mistakes, but it comes down to taking a step back, seeing what you did, seeing what you did wrong, and then, you know, trying to readjust it and try to see how you can overcome that, and then make another plan on how you're going to overcome that. So, learn, make mistakes, and then try again. Again, kind of just talking a little bit about that, um, and then grow at your own pace. That's pretty much, you know, don't force it. Um, and when it comes down to trying to be successful in anything, uh, the biggest thing is that. You know, we're not here to prove ourselves to anyone. If it takes you, you know, 10 years to make a, to make a hundred thousand um, dollars, you know, a year, regardless of what it is. And, and you're seeing consistent growth, but you know, you're seeing at a much smaller rate uh, pace. If it's something that you can do and it's something that you can accommodate, uh, but you see that it does have that potential then continue going for it, stay disciplined, stay consistent um, and grow at your own pace. That's one of the most important things. Are you good? Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the little surprise that I wanted to what the heck let's see i'm trying to read some of your comments what give her a pop quiz more videos than your sister. You guys are. <laughs> what? Guys, if you continue saying stuff about my sister, my mom, I'm going to block you. <laughs> <laughs> this by Carlos. What? Hey, Carlos, don't put. Oh, man. Carlos, I, I really do appreciate you coming out of your way and, and saying that and stuff, but I just don't want to support anything, you know, with, with negative connotation. So, with all due respect, let's just try to not talk about that if we can. Thank you. Ricky is greater than Ty Lopez. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, 
Alyssa Harsh. What? She said, what my favorite makeup is. Like, my favorite makeup brand? Oh, uh, I do know. Uh, um, I mean, closer. Okay. Okay, so, okay, you can, um, the, the last thing I don't want her to be answering, Carlos, I really do appreciate that, and I want you to understand, like, I really do, and I thank you for that. Um, any book recommendations for those that are part of TechBud Solutions? On the left-hand side of the search bar, within once you get accepted to the TechBud Solutions Facebook group, you can search up books um, or book, and then there's so many people that are sharing um, what books they are sharing and stuff like that. Guys, I'm going to block you if you guys continue talking about it. With all due respect, I want you guys to understand that. Again, please understand that. So one of the things that um, we have certain plans, and, and this is where I'm, I'm really going to make it happen. Um, we're talking about trading, right? So I had a Robinhood account that I don't use anymore. Um, and one of the really cool approaches that we took was with um, a stock that, or I was hanging out with my buddy, um, Ryan, um, this morning. And I finished trading. I did my two trades for the day. I was up $175. Um, and that was great, right? It didn't hit my goal, but I didn't want to force anything. And then we got an alert that CUR um, dropped below 170 or dropped below 180. So it hit highs of um, or what was it, 180 or 290? Not too sure. Let me go ahead and go back. So you are no, it was it, was, it went below two, um, 280. I alerted the team, and then I was right next to Ryan. Ryan was the one that just wanted to start trading. Um, and what I told him was like, look, it has a support at 270. It started to bounce up, and once it broke above two, so it bounced at 270, just like we called it out, and it broke above 275. So it was breaking resistance, and I was like, he was like, does it make sense? And I was like, do you understand it? He was like, yeah, I'll try to buy in at 275. And then I'll try to sell at 290. And he got filled at 276, and then he ended up selling at um, 288. So he made like 4.1% profit. With 25 or $2,300, I think he made like a 4.41%. I, I posted um, this whole thing on the Discord group chat. So if you were a part of that, you guys saw that, how I shouted out Ryan for, for doing that. Um, and he made hundred dollars. It was like hundred and eight dollars or something like that. That was huge, right? With a two thousand yeah. dollar investment, hundred dollars, and it was his first trade. So he yeah. did very well. So what I'm gonna do for you is I funded my Robinhood account. So I funded it five hundred dollars. Um, and to and I want you guys to understand. Am I really giving her like five hundred dollars? Um, so I just wanted like to at least kind of show you guys. Uh, but I funded her um or my old account five hundred dollars, and I'm gonna let her trade tomorrow. Um. So you guys might be thinking like, oh man, like she's going to lose everything. Guys, like we're going to have a plan what, right yeah. when she gets filled. We're going to have a stop loss. So there's going to be a small margin for loss, right? Mm -hmm. If it's 1%, we're losing $5. Um, and I pay for a majority of everything that you do, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, and then, so it, it really comes down to, we're going to set up a plan. We're going to invest the $500 in what she sees value in. We're going to you know, buy, sell, and or have a whole plan on where we're going to buy, where we're going to sell, and where we're going to cut our losses and see how it plays out. And hopefully maybe we can spark some interest in you to potentially invest, right? Yeah, it, but that'd be cool. That'd be cool, right? Yeah, so, I'm excited. Um, <laughs> um, Brother Award. Can you fund my Chipotle stock account, Tanner? No, we can't. Come on, dude. We can definitely not fund your account. So, um, yeah. So I, I really just wanted to make a video. I was kind of thinking. I was like, what kind of cool video can I make while I'm here in California? Tanner didn't want to hang out with me today, um, so I was stuck with my little sister. Totally kidding. Now, um, but I was like, how cool would it be for someone that has no knowledge <laughs> about trading stocks, right? With all due respect, um, how cool would it be to kind of just talk to her and show her how to identify potential, how to plant mm -hmm. her trade, and the importance of that. But most importantly have my following of over 35,000 subscribers and my 33,000 numbers within TechBit Solutions to kind of see how, how the whole mechanics works, right? It's, you're at least exposed to, you know, how to, how yeah, to trade. Yeah, I at least, I feel like I at least have like a general idea of what the stock stock market is now because I had no idea before. But yeah, and one of, the, yeah. one of the funniest things, and I'm going to throw her under the bus for this, she was like, I don't understand, like, what's the whole point of investing? Like, you're buying, like, what are you buying? And I was like, shares of a yeah. company. She's like, what do you mean shares? <laughs> and um, there's just so much sass, like she, or attitude. She she didn't understand, it, and that's completely great because a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. They're just buying pieces of a company that are valued at certain price points, mm -hmm. and all you have to worry about is the percentage increase. You can worry about the price increase, but really, what matters is the percentage increase because that's the thing that is multiplied towards what you're investing. So if you saw a 10% increase mm -hmm. for a thousand dollar investment, doesn't matter about the price point. It all matters about the percentage increase. And you know, for a thousand dollars, ten percent, that's a hundred dollars. Yeah. Great, right? Yeah. Um, but again, it's a very simple idea and it comes down to 
I'm just exposing people to that, to the general understanding on how to invest. I understand that this isn't the most detailed video that she's not going to, you know, be an extremely profitable day trader with just a general understanding. But I think it's really cool to at least expose you guys to the fundamentals of what we do every single day, Monday through Friday, and the amazing community that we have with one another. So um, I'm excited to kind of see how she does tomorrow. I'm going to be right by her side, so don't worry. Like we we won't lose more than like I'll probably give her a cushion of two percent. Um, so ten ten dollars is is what really we're risking. Um, and it comes down to managing risk and consistency is key. Have a plan, stick to your plan, um, and then stay consistent and stay determined. So with that, lock in consistent profits. If you're green, green to screen, if you're up one, two percent, regardless of what it is, you know, ten percent, twenty percent looks good, mm -hmm. but green is green. And that's one of the most important things. Like lock in your profits if you're up and you see that it's not trending up or breaking the resistance, just lock in your profits and um, overall, you know, it's better than being in the red, right? Mm -hmm. Um so it's 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 a very elementary approach that we're taking when it comes to that. So you are It's so funny seeing a person trying to understand. What the <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay. So <laughs> it's not real money until you press sell. Okay. Um, you're lucky to have a brother like Ricky who teaches you about trading at age seventeen. Pretty much set for success. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, it comes oh, down to nice job. Where? Thank you. Um, the most important thing, guys, it's and and I think I have a very realistic approach. I, I think I understand extreme examples of someone like myself that really just loves dedicating my time and, and my effort um, to this group and, and to the series of businesses and markets that um, I see. You know, value in a lot of people. I don't want to say that they're not motivated. It's they just don't see value in working so hard to make money because mon um, you know, money isn't the most important thing, yeah. right? Uh, kind of like my girlfriend. My girlfriend um, is studying to be a teacher. Um, she's one of like the smartest ladies like that I know, um, and she's very determined. She's very smart, but she really just likes the just the value that she has in teaching people. She's trying to teach kids with special needs. And that's be, uh, that's a beautiful thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just like you, you see value in being a fashion designer, or what do you want to be? Like a fashion merchandiser. <laughs> whatever, merchandiser. I don't even know if that's what you call it. Um, I want to be in the fashion merchandiser. And just to let you guys know, my little sister, she you have like a 4.0 GPA or 3.0. No, 3.8. It went down, so she wasn't doing uh, very well this year. Uh, but she has a 3.8 GPA, so she's very smart. Does it mean that you know she's going to excel in the stock market? No, it comes down to be being like driven by the passion. Um, understanding what it is that you're investing in, and if you have a passion for it, then overcoming any hesitation that you guys might have. So that's one of the most important things. Don't think just you know if if people aren't working hard towards you know making a lot of money, that doesn't m make them you know successful. One of the most important things is if you're happy doing what it is that you're doing and you see value in that, mm -hmm. then just continue doing that, right? Yeah. And you know the money will come and the money will follow in. That's one of the one of the coolest things. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Again, um, the link is. <laughs> you know Tanner, the guy that I hung out yeah. with yesterday. Um, he's like, "Yeah, money comes second to Lambos on the important list." So you're saying that, uh, um, what's it called? Um, that uh, Lambos are the most important thing. So, all right, uh. go back. Um, but thank you guys again. I really do appreciate your guys' time. Most importantly, I just want to remind you guys that whatever it is that you guys are doing um, or continue, you know, trying to pursue, if you guys see value in it, don't give up. Continue working towards it, um, and the time will come. Be driven by your passion. Uh, set up a plan on how you're going to be successful. Manage your risk, and then be consistent and be determined to making it happen. Um, there's a lot of platforms out there, so you don't have to really manage um, or risk any real money, and that's one of the best things. Why not get into trading stocks at a very early age? doesn't mean that you have to trade penny stocks. I don't want to like encourage that or anything like that. Invest what you see value in and do it within your own means. Don't invest real money. Do paper trading, and if you see that this is a profitable market and that you can prove to yourself that you can be successful, mm -hmm. then why not take the jump uh, or you know, if it makes sense to you, make the decision to start investing money and that's one of the coolest things so again if you're not a part of our group tech Book solutions the link is down in the description if you haven't followed me on instagram i'm going to plug 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 we have to break 10k <laughs> i know like guys i never asked you guys to follow me if you guys can follow me on instagram i'm really just trying to get that swipe up feature i know it's pretty sad um but Tanner got it, and if Tanner got it, come on, guys! Like we have to get it. We have we have thirty three thousand members within Tech, but we have like twice as much subscribers as he does. So if you guys can help me out, that would be great. But most importantly, and I mean this, you know, 
<laughs> I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I talk a little bit too quick. It's just because I get so excited and, and so driven by um, all you guys. But continue working hard. Continue doing what it is that you guys love and be driven by your passion. I, I can't thank you guys enough for dedicating time and watching this video. If you guys could share it with someone that you think can personally you know, benefit from the specific content that was being shared, we would really appreciate that. And then again, don't don't forget the importance of within the Tech Book Solutions group chat, the importance and, and the whole idea that we have this platform is to share your ideas, share your best practices, what has led to your success, and share your mistakes so that thousands of members that are within that platform don't have to repeat them because they're exposed to that opportunity. Um, um, for those that are asking about the group chat, um, if it's open, I am opening it for 24 hours. So if you're not part of it already, feel free to click on the TechBud Solutions Facebook link. And then once you get accepted, um, there's going to be a post and just search up Discord group. Um, and then that should pop up. So thank you guys again. I hope you guys have an amazing Tuesday. I will be going live tomorrow at 6 a.m. So that's 30 minutes before the market opens. So we scan during pre-market hours. Um, and I'm, not, I'm pretty sure you're not going to wake up that early. Mm -hmm. But... Um, We'll definitely make her uh, make her first investment. We're, we're thinking about $500 um, and then planning out her trade. So hopefully you guys can stay tuned for that. Um, and then I'll be going live for that specific stream. But I will be going live um, for the live stream at 6 a.m., so right before the market opens. Um, that's Mountain Standard Time. And then um, my helpful video will most likely be her. I'm catching a flight back to Arizona tomorrow um, just because I have a meeting uh, with a member within TechBuds that I'm pretty excited about. Um, and then I just have a couple things with my businesses that I have to manage. So. Um, Thank you guys again. Like always, give it a thumbs up for my little sister um, if she did a good job. Like right. and subscribe. No, <laughs> you guys do what it is that you guys want, you know. But we really appreciate your guys' support. Uh, continue working hard. Continue doing what it is that you guys love. And like always, guys, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care.